Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some scroll saw work, and the idea is to cut out these birds on the perch. All that we see we will cut out, apart from the black lines, and we're going to fill them in with resin, and hopefully multicoloured resin, to allow the light to shine through and give us some kind of stained glass effect. Okay, let's start doing this. First of all, we need to stick it to our... This is just... MDF, you can use birch, belted birch, whatever you like. I'm just using what's handy today. So we've got that. The best way for me is to cover the board with your painter's tape and then literally get some spray on glue, spray that on, and then stick your template pattern like so. And once that's stuck down, we're good to scroll so I'll stick this off now and then come back when we're ready to put the pilot holes into each section and they are literally an hole that we're going to make so we can feed the blade through and hopefully cut out all these sections remember just leaving behind the black lines okay that's all glued down nicely all we need to do next is put in our pilot holes in every section because obviously we've got to feed the blade through now normally if something like this a little hole is always requ all required and I would use these these are called pinless blades there's actually about 15 in that bundle that's how small they are the lovely blades to work with however with my old drapper scroll saw I have to put a bracket on either end like so there's actually a blade in the middle there and it's just a pain to hook it up, hook underneath, take it off, and it's certainly more work than it's worth. But we're lucky with this one that we can make larger hole and fit in our pin blade. Obviously, it's got a little pin at the bottom. And we've plenty of room to use this one today. So that's come in my favour. So, yes, we'll now drill the holes enough to feed this pin blade through. Right, we've drilled all of them. Even with that small hole, it wasn't big enough for the pins to fit through. So I literally just went along the side again. Now it's not pretty looking, but we're not too bothered. Our pin blade fits through there, no problem. And then all we do is just take that out and we'll pop it into the next one and the next one. And we'll just go along as we want it. So don't worry about it looking pretty at this stage. It'll certainly look a lot better when it's finished. Okay, let's get this set up. Right, we've gone all the way around that. We've not lost anything. That's always a good sign. All we need to do now is just peel our tape off, hopefully. This should come off fairly easy. So I'll continue with this. Pull this off like so. Once that's all off, we're just going to paint it black. Let that dry, 
and then we can do the easy bit of putting our resin in too. Right, that's all peeled off nicely. I'll give it a light rubbing over with some sandpaper, nothing too fancy, just to get the little bits off on both sides. And that's it, we're ready for painting now. Now you can paint this any colour you want. I just prefer black because it looks more like a stained glass lead effect. And that is just a, simply a case of just throwing that on there all over. You want to get inside those bits and bobs. Remember, we're going to have resin in there, so don't panic if you do miss a little bit. Just get it all coated like so. Obviously the same on the other side. You see where we're going with this one, can't you? So I'll continue with this. We'll let it all dry and then we'll go inside and we'll start putting our resin in. Right, you can see from that, that's all nicely dry. All nicely painted. Now it's resin time. This is basically just a board for the MDF so I can carry it away when we're finished. Now I've done a couple of these before on my previous videos. One was a butterfly and the other was a rose. Now I use different options on both of those and this will be a third option. This is for my benefit as well as you guys. The first time I did the butterfly I used some of this transparent book covering film. It, to me it's like a giant sellotape and it comes on some paper like this. And you can peel it off and basically stick that to the back of that nice and clear and start pouring your resin. Now I did have a lot of leakages with that but as it was a butterfly it blended in nicely and we got away with it. The second time when I did the rose I actually used live sellotape like so and that is just a case of filling all the back in. That worked a lot better. There was slight leakages but the rose turned out fine. The only problem you have to do separate colours so you did all your reds let it dry any spillages you could cut off with a sharp knife then do your greens let it dry and so on so it's a long procedure and that's the backing with the sellotape actually stood on it I didn't actually pull it off so that's a good idea obviously it takes longer what I'm going to try and do today is use some of our clear transparent to put on the underneath this stick it on as normal which will, which will be that way And then what I want to do, just to make sure it seals it a lot better, I'm actually going to get some resin. I'm going to mix a small little batch up and I'm going to coat the back of this all with resin. Just brush it on. You've got plenty of time to play with it. And hopefully, when we come to stick it onto this, it'll just be a lot firmer, a nice seal all the way around. And then we'll come back and hopefully we can put all our colours in, all in the one go. Happy days. So that's what we're going to try today. As always, I mean, you might use super glue there. It's just a lot to put on with super glue. So I'm going to stick with the resin. As always, I'm going to use my uh, amazing clear cast, which is this stuff here. This comes in part A and part B, and you just mix it one to one. So if you want half an inch in a container of resin, half an inch or whatever of the hardener and you just mix the two together because I'm only going to back the birds today I'm going to such a small amount there look and you can do that so I'm hoping that's going to be enough to brush it over right we've mixed all our resin up now ideally you could just pour that straight over that polythene like so and literally just rest your birds into it however there is some sections there that need to be cut out and it's just going to be easier if I haven't got too much resin in there. It's not a big problem, but we're just trying to save work at the end of the day. And I've got plenty of time. So I'm just going to cover the back of this and do it that way. And I'm not even going to bother with a brush. Literally get the spoon with the resin on and just start coating it like that. It goes nice and black once it's covered, so it stands out a lot better.
And that's literally it really. So I'll continue cover this and then we'll come back when it's stuck down. Okay, it's the next day. It's all nicely set. As it's sealed, we'll soon find out when we start putting our our resin inside. Okay, colours. I'm going to use as many as I can. I got these as a job lot straight off eBay. Come as they are, little dyes. So I'm going to basically try and use every colour. Maybe. A and B as always. Mix these two together. Part A, part B. Exactly the same procedure. I want to start off with something like that. Half an inch in a cup. Half an inch of resin. Half an inch of hardener. Mix the two together. And we'll start off with one droplet of this. Because we want to be able to let the light come through. This is going to be stained glass effect, remember. And the more of this you put in, the darker and thicker colour wise it's going to be. So I'll mix all this off camera, drop our little one drop of red in and we'll see what it looks like and then we'll start randomly filling this in. Okay we've mixed up our resin, we've obviously doubled the amount of our A and B cups put together. That looks quite a lot here so if you're not too sure you could mark another cup with C just make a smaller bit there and mix it that way. But we're going to try and keep the resin to the colour ratio the same through the whole lot. And hopefully it, uh, the sun should shine at the same time. So this one's mixed up now. I always have side projects going. So there's no wastage. This will go into here and this is going to be used on something else. So we're literally going to try one drop of this red. That's all it is. There. Now if you can see that, one drop. And we'll see what kind of red it gives us. Can I say? Nice good mix round like so. And that's one droplet of red to a good inch of resin. Now if we mix the yellow the same, the blue, the green, the orange, Hopefully we'll have the same consistency. I'm going to leave that at one drop. Plenty left for another day. And now we're just going to randomly, I've got a rough idea where I want to go. We've got too many reds together, too many yellows, and we're just basically just going to fill this in. Now I've done the one colour, everyone's going to be the same procedure, so you won't need to see all of this. So let's start filling some of this in, and we'll see if our little resin barrier is held up. I do apologise for the focusing on this one, it seems to be struggling today. These plastic forks are ideal, because you can use them as little spoons, and basically feed that in there like so. On the bigger areas, you can just pour it straight from the cup. But I like to do this, because it's all good practice. You can help it spread along to it touches the sides. And what we don't want it to do is drip through the sides. <laughs> we'll have one there. Uh, put a red down here. This one we can put in a bit quicker. Like so. We'll have a red in there. Red, red, red. Maybe two reds down here, I'm thinking. Okay, you get the general idea. I'm going to fill all this in now and we'll come back when it's completed. Right, you can see from that we've gone over our reds. It all looks a bit messy at the moment, don't worry about it. Get yourself a lighter and literally just going to go over the top of this. Like so. You can do this a couple of times as it's drying. And you can see the difference between that red and the red there. 
That's more like a pink. That's only because it's full of air bubbles. That will clear up exactly the same. Like so. You get the general idea. I'll go around this and do all these reds. And then we'll start popping in another colour. Now that's enough red for me to be honest. But I do have some left. But like I say, I'll simply pour that into that little lid there. And that's to go on to a, another project. Right, I'll continue and come back. It's basically the same stuff all the time. Okay, that's all filled in. We've had no disasters. The resin using as a glue to stick to the background, or to the polythene on the background, should I say. That's definitely worked, so I'll remember that one for next time. Some things that I've noticed, the red's a bit weak. That could have probably had a couple of drops of dyeing. Some colours are stronger than others. It's a trial and error. If you watch my previous videos, I'm more of a routing kind of person than these kind of projects. But it's nice to have a bit of a change. So what we're going to do now is let these all set. And then we'll see if we've got the effect we're after. Still going over with our lighter. And that's literally just to release any little air bubbles in there. But however, stained glass does have air bubbles in, to be honest. So if there's a couple in there... I wouldn't be too concerned about it, it just give it a bit more realistic look. So that's it. We'll come back in 24 hours and we'll see what we've got. Right, it's the next day. Everything's set nicely. Everything's nice and solid, no problems there. I have noticed the purple and the green have come out very dark. You can't even see through that. So remember that for next time. What was happening there was I probably started off with a red. I had a bit of red left over. So I added another colour to the red to get this. So obviously you're doubling up the amount of dye. But it doesn't matter. It still looks cool. Another good thing I've noticed, normally I would... Just cut round this and leave the backing on. But I did took a chance, and I don't mind taking the chances, so we learn. And this stuff will actually peel off nice and slowly. And it is slowly. Don't go rushing it. So it's slow process like that. And eventually it will all come off. And if you check the back, I actually prefer the back of it to the front. Anyway, I'll peel the rest of this off nice and slowly. So that certainly worked fine. And then we'll come back and this little project will be complete. Okay, we've cleared all the tape off the back. The back is slightly duller, but I think you could Brush some clear resin on that, and that'll bring that shine right back. And that's the front, a bit more about it. So yeah, we've learned that we can stick it down with resin. The plastic film peels off nicely, no problem. Downside is mixing too many colours together with small amounts of resin. These are non-transparent, you can't even see through those. But if it was all a bit hit and miss, you don't have to put it in the window. You could also put it on a, stick it to a wooden backing like that. That would make a nice picture. Also, you could actually pop it in a frame like so. There's plenty of options going to you if it don't work out the way it should. So there you have it. One stained glass effect. Birds, 10 inch by five inch. Filled in with 
multicolored resins. Thank you very much for watching.